Do you have an orange pine dresser that you want to update? Let's get in it. So first thing I want to do is take off all of the um, trim pieces. I don't think they're going to fit this modern style that I have in mind. They don't really fit my style, so taking them off. Thankfully, when I flipped it over, this front piece was just held on by a couple of screws. Easy. However, the sides uh, were built into the cabinet. That, that side comes all the way down. Oh, safety first. Make sure you wear your glasses. <laughs> So I marked it. I am just going to go straight down. I would love to have done this at an angle, but behind that side wall there is a whole bunch of support stuff I didn't want to cut through. So I'm just going in straight there. I'm going to come down the side and cut the rest of that. This blade's pretty long, so it was able to reach all the way down. However, I ran into an obstruction. So in looking underneath, there's a staple underneath. So nothing a flathead screwdriver and a hammer can't solve. Then I get into there and there's like three or four staples. These aren't little staples. These are huge staples. I think this is from when the furniture is made. The manufacturer puts uh, these staples down there with a strip of cloth or uh, that holds it must hold something during shipment so let's take a look at that staple that's a big staple no wonder the blade couldn't get through it okay staples gone finish this off I'm just gonna cut to the line and then You'll notice that when I was cutting the other direction, I couldn't get all the way through because my saw was hitting something. So I've got a section there that I need to cut that I'm gonna use my multi-tool on. So this tool has a vibrating blade and at the end are little tiny saw teeth. And it'll just cut right through wood. My blade's getting very dull because I had been using it actually to cut some screws from my last project where I was separating nightstands. But it will eventually get through this this just normally takes only a few seconds, so time to buy a new blade. Okay, so we got through that, I'm putting the leg back on. I'm gonna go in and just sand all those rough edges down from the saw. Sometimes there's little bits where I need to straighten it out. It's easy to do with the sander underneath the dresser, especially. Okay, let's go to the other side. We'll repeat the whole process. I'm a quick learner, so after we mark this, first things first, remove the staples. All right, that had about five staples in it. So now we'll just go through, cut this one as far as I can. Then we'll do the other angle. Okay, and then once again, with a little help from our multi-tool, go in and just finish off that last little corner. It's definitely time for a new blade. This really cuts through wood pretty quickly when it's not dull. This is a great tool to have. I use it for all kinds of different things. There we go. I was thinking about replacing those um, turned feet on the front, but this isn't odd. It's like a five and a quarter inches, and I just, I just didn't want to construct something completely new. So we're going to reuse those. I think it'll still work with this design. And there we are. The bottom is done. However, I still need to address this trim piece on the top. I've looked inside, I've looked on the back. 
I don't see any attachments of any kind. I'm hoping this is wood dowels and I can just pop this off, but uh, that's a no. I even took my putty knife and was gonna hammer it down to see if I could get through or pop some glue, something. This isn't budging. So after a couple of attempts with that, I go straight in with just brute force. So here goes a rubber mallet. <laughs> I'll deal with the damage after, but I just wanna get it off. So what I found is it's got screws that are actually down. The head of the screw is inside the top. There was no access to it. I don't know how they got that in there, but it's gone now. We just have a few places to repair. So I'm taking off the old hardware and trying to decide use this hardware, which is really unique. It's kind of cool. Or use this hardware. And because I'm really wanting to modernize this dresser, I think I'm gonna use the uh, the new champagne gold hardware, a combination of knobs and pulls. That means I need to patch all of these holes. Each one of those other knobs had two holes in it, so the whole pattern is just completely different than the new one. Also going to put some Bondo in that area on the back that I damaged, taking that top off. I go in with some painter's tape, which does not stick to Bondo, but it will allow me to smooth that out and it'll just save me some time on sanding. Cardboard's great to put there too if you really want to make something smooth, cardboard and tape and fill it with Bondo. More Bondo, this thing was covered with dents and dings. I'm also putting Bondo in the knots. Knots look like they're fine, but once you get ready to paint them, the center of the knot many times has a void and it's rough. So fill it in with some Bondo. That way you won't see the knot after you start to paint. I'm just doing everything with the orbital and then I'm going to go in with my surf prep. This will get all the rounded areas since I'm using a sponge. So I'm just going to go through and do all the round areas on the drawers. Now you can see what the tape did to just help smooth that out. I will have to paint this, obviously, but you'll barely even notice it was there after it's all painted. This is a tall dresser. I'm tall, but I'm not that tall. And now I'm just gonna use my 120 grit to scuff sand the rest of everything else. I've sanded off as much Bondo as I need to, and now I just wanna cover every inch of this dresser with 120 grit just to make sure everything's scuffed. Adhesion is everything. So you gotta make sure you get everything scuff sanded. And again, I'm gonna go in with my surf prep on the rounded areas, which will be down each side and the entire band around the top. It doesn't have a square edge, so I just really love this sander for these types of applications. All right, we're all sanded. I vacuumed everything out, and now I'm just gonna go in for a final clean because this thing is really dusty. Into the spray tent we go. Time for a little primer. I'm the headless painter. <laughs> okay, I'm using uh, Insulex Sticks Primer. And after it dries, I go in and sand every surface. I do this between coats of paint. I do this between coats of top coat. I'm using a sanding sponge. This is what it looks like. Super, it's, it's the best thing. This is a 330 grit, but I, I love it for this, especially for in between coats. So now I'm going in with my paint. This paint is a blend that I made a while ago and I've had it now color matched, um, but this is a custom color I made using Restoration Bronze and Oyster, both by Melange. And, if you ask me the formula, I don't remember, but I think it's equal parts. And even the best of us still get drips. I don't, it's hard to see there, but there's an area there that dripped. It's winter, it's cold, and sometimes the paint just didn't get grip on it before it started to head down the side. So I use a sanding net. 
Just took that right off. I also used my sponge to smooth everything out after the net because it's kind of rough. And I'm going in with another coat of paint. So I paint with the drawers in. Everyone asks why. It's because it's the best way to do it. The inside stays clean. There's just this little edge there that I need to touch up. And I've done two coats of primer, two coats of paint. I will go in now and fix all these edges and then go in with my prime, uh, top coat after I do the hardware holes. I try to get everything done. Final thing is top coat. So now I'm just working on spacing. I'm measuring the placement. Then I'm going to use a hardware jig. I'll put it down, drill the hole, and I use the same thing, I just flip it over to the other side so you don't have to redo anything. Use the same jig for the poles as well, I'll just have to reset it. And now it's time for top coat. I use a tinted top coat, so you either add a little paint to your top coat or I add top coat to my canister after I dump the paint out. And I did two coats of top coat as well, sanding in between, really important. And here we are, she's all done. Went from that orange, outdated dresser to this modern beauty. I hope you like it.